He's the second most famous stop, stop Brexit man in the country. So uh, him and me have never had any particular beef together. And, and, I, and I, I, I view him with, with warmth. But I'm never going to be on the receiving end of his tirades or on the receiving end of his um, antics, am I? Here's a little taste of what they sound and indeed feel like. Well, we've got a minority government, and Stop what we've Brexit. seen... It's a disaster! What we've Thank seen... Uh, you, do you know, you're, you're a disgrace. Excuse Please leave. Me, Please Mr. leave. Let, 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 let this debate take place. Let this, party, let this debate Evans. take place. This is just... And this um, is an example of the extremism that we see from Remainers. Are you party to any information that we haven't heard so far? Uh, not really. We, we had... Stop! We had talks... If we leave, it will be delightful that this idiot will shut up. He's exercising his democratic right. I appreciate it makes it very difficult to do an interview, and we do want to hear we'll have a go. as well. We will try. We'll have a go. Finally and most of all, I want to thank my husband, Philip, who's been my greatest supporter and my closest companion. That wasn't me. <laughs> I think the answer to that is, I think not. That they're questions you, that Pay Sue Gray needs to ask, uh, Mr. ask Mr Cummings. Where has it gone? OK, so um, the number of MPs so that have gone public, though, alongside you, are still in single million. figures. Uh, I understand you've got a bit of a distraction down there on College Green, but I understand that the, it's still in single figures, nowhere near 54. It's the, the, village, the village idiot. The village idiot is out. No, out the on... village idiot is in front of the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you've got Mark Francois and Andrew Bridge in there calling someone else an idiot, which I think is, is I mean, that's got to be a, 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 a moment in history. Imagine being called an idiot by Andrew Bridge, the man who thought he was qualified to get an Irish passport by dint of being Brit British, or, or Mark Francois, who, where do you even begin cataloguing the uh, qualifications he has for calling somebody else an idiot? And, and it is quite funny. Did you feel a tiny, tiny little bit sorry for Theresa May, perhaps, as she was having her pee into her husband, Philip, disrupted uh, right at the moment of her departure from Downing Street? And then Nigel Evans, uh, a, a, another Conservative MP, at the very beginning of that clip. I'll probably play that to you again in the hope that I stop finding it so funny because it's going to influence how I conduct the rest of the conversation, the fact that I'm giggling here like a superannuated schoolboy. Um, Yesterday, the police turned up mob-handed to confiscate his loud hailers, and that's probably the angle we're going to go down, although I'm already wary of having fallen into a freedom of expression-shaped trap because he's had these loud hailers for years. Um, new laws came into power yesterday. The Metropolitan Police insist they weren't using the new laws that the Ministry of Justice has brought in to tackle non-violent protests that have, and I quote, significant disruptive effect on the public or on access to Parliament. The point to make is he really gets on the nerves of these people. Would you describe him as, a, as, a, as someone who holds up mirrors? Or would that be too generous? Because he's, he's shouting the odds for, from, from a few yards away. Is it really fair to say that these... Brexiters are looking in the mirror that Steve Bray holds up and they hate what they see, so they've brought in laws to break his mirror. I don't know, but we'll all get seven years' bad luck either way. Um, the Met say that they actually seized the equipment under the 2011 Police Reform Act. It'd be Section 145, wouldn't it? Police Reform Social Responsibility Act, which gives them power to seize items being used for prohibited activities in Parliament Square. But he's always done that. He's also facing prosecution potentially, because the offence has been reported. So here's a little sound of the police. Oh, that was good. And also the, the, woo, woo, and also the response uh, when Steve Bray was interviewed a little later in the day on the BBC. Are you proud of yourselves, boys and girls? This is not law. This is not law. This is not law. There is a long established constitutional rule against particular law. Long established. This country has fallen to fascism. Wherever I went, I had a team of officers following me. How many? Eight at one point, and then towards the end of the day, it was down to two. What do you think of that use of police time, Steve? Uh, well, look, it's a waste of money. It's, it's the kind of thing they do in North Korea and Russia, the old Soviet Union. 
uh, we're heading down a very dangerous path and I think whatever people protest, you know, we don't have to agree with each other, but what we can agree on, we have a basic human right, which is the right to protest. Once you start taking that away, we're heading down a very slippery slope. They're not taking away your right to protest. It, that's my understanding no, anyway. It's just, the, you're, you're just a bit, apparently, a bit too noisy. The, protest is all about sound and vision. If they want us to stand there with our arms folded, nobody will know anything. Mm. You know, this is dissent. Government needs to be held to account. And that's what we do in our own way. So they've got your amplifiers. So, so until you get them back or until you, someone donates you some new equipment, I mean, would you, would you, if you got some new amplifiers, would you do it again? Uh, look, I, I can't possibly say what I'm bringing tomorrow. <laughs> um, but let's just say it's not going to be quiet. Should probably get down there and find out what he's up to, shouldn't we? Quarter past 11 is the time. Um, what do you reckon? Seriously, a, a couple of qualifications. It's every day, it's, or, or at least almost every day. It's, it's not the same as a, as a scheduled protest. It is disruptive. It's deliberately disruptive. But I think it's also worth reminding you that, that we live in a country where a huge proportion of the, and it's not a phrase I like, but it, 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 it's a descriptive one, a huge proportion of the so-called mainstream media is still complicit in the lies and racist propaganda that delivered Brexit. You know, it's probably why this programme is so popular at the moment, because there are so few places you can go to hear the truth about Brexit. And the idea that the mail can continue to print the unadulterated bilge that it passes off as journalism, or the sun can continue to do Nazi-style lists of Ramonas under the banner Ramona Watch, while one bloke who has the ability and the, and the financial freedom to... Uh, uh, to collar Brexiters, public Brexiters, liars and con artists who have sold this country down the river, persuaded the population to knee themselves in the nuts and then demand that they say thank you afterwards. Silencing him or turning down the volume on him seems to me to be a problem, so it sounds to me to be uh, a worry. But I'm basing that on what his cause is. So I'm basing it on the principle, not on the practice, which is a mistake. I don't think that's valid. Because would I be saying this about him if he was promoting something that I don't happen to agree with? I can't tell you. Hand on heart, I can't look you in the eye and say, of course I would. If, it, you know, if the whole country was, uh, was reflecting the reality of Brexit and one bloke standing on Parliament Green was shouting lies and, 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 and nonsense, would I be supporting his freedom of expression? Or maybe that isn't actually the problem that I thought it was. At, at some point, objective reality has to kick in, has to track... Well, anyway, so 0345 is the number you need. I think those were good clips. I'll probably play you the first one again because you, you need to see it as a constant threat to all Brexity politicians and all journalists trying to conduct interviews of that sort of disruption should the police act to diminish and dilute that sort of disruption for the record i don't think they should in fact as this conversation goes on i think the more certain i'll get and i'll tell you something else i'm certain about this is disgusting from andrea ledsom mp steve bray has spent six years screaming abuse through a loud hailer at me and many others as often as he saw us for the quotes crime end quotes of trying to fulfill the democratic decision of the uk to leave the eu there's a lie there another massive lie there because it's not a democratic decision for the UK to leave the EU if the reasons people were given for leaving the EU were false and bogus. Andrea Ledsom, of course, is, is, is the woman that deigned to argue with the former director general of the World Trade Organization, Pascal Lamy, about what the World Trade Organization was and did. Uh, what, uh, and she then goes, this action by the police to stop his violent protest is very, very welcome. And then the grown woman, who's also a mother, deploys three clapping hand emojis as a, as a mark of just how sophisticated her political discourse is. Violent protest. What on earth are they scared of? If, if, if his behaviour is so awful, why do they have to lie about it being violent? So what do you think about the confiscation of the loudspeakers? And this is really important. Why are they doing it? 